Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This is a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fiction or genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Somewhere Between. A fantastic episode. So much crazy goodness went down in this episode, but I was going to break everything down bit by bit. Obviously, I thought things were going to work out for Laura at the beginning of the episode because she's making it go like, no, no, I'm cool, I'm calm, collated, I'm bringing my family in. We Then you can get a real evaluation. I was like, okay, Laura's got this on lock. She knows how to play the system just as like hey this is the day that Serena gets kidnapped and which will eventually lead to her dying. Like, as long as she's here with me hey, I don't have to worry about it uh, but sadly things didn't kind of work out that way because when Serena showed up she was wearing the clothes that she dies in which I'd almost completely forgot about the storyline of like yeah Laura threw those clothes out like at earlier in the season and then but the um janitor brought them back up. I was like, because I recognized the shoes immediately because I've already played the eerie music, but I didn't put it together the whole attire, but then it's like, it made sense. Like, you know, so, um, I kind of forgot there was a whole attire to it. Like, all I focused on was mainly the shoes, but nevertheless, and what kind of blew my mind about this whole situation is Tom's reaction. He's just like, you're being crazy again. Okay, Laura, I guess, I guess we're done with this. And it's like, they're talking and everything, and she's basically like, come on, Tom. I've, I've figured out some stuff I shouldn't have figured out. The whole Debray situation, everything associated with it. So obviously, I know some stuff. I know something's going to happen to Serena. He's like, no, 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 you're crazy. You're, you're, uh, all I care about is your well-being and our daughter's well-being. And this, this isn't good for her. And she's like, well, what about the rings? I'm going to tell people that you stole the rings. He's like, there's no proof of that. It's like, you're such a dick for that. Like, this whole situation, it's like, why won't you not give her the benefit of the doubt? I get it, you think she's acting a little crazy, but come on, dude. You know something's going on here with this particular situation, but I guess for him, he's just like, no, she's so crazy, she's paranoid about something going to happen to Serena. It's just like she's flipping out and freaking out. But it's like, dude, you, you obviously you're in bed with some very dangerous people, which we don't really know. Like what, like, what it is that he's getting out of... I mean, it seems like I got some idea because this is about some power position because it seems like everything's lining up for him to get some senator role. But for him to go as far as, like, being like, oh, you're crazy. It's like, these people have already come to you and it's like, hey, get your wife to back down or or, or we'll kind of have to step in. We don't want to have to deal with this again. So you know you're dealing with some dangerous people. But, you know... But then during the episode, it kind of got me thinking, it's like, is that why he locked her up? To keep her away from this whole situation? Because it's like, to keep her from meddling too much? It's like, okay, she's in the, she's locked up in a hospital. An interesting place called All, um, All Souls Hospital. I thought that was kind of an interesting name. I, I actually made sure to take note of that, just because I thought that was kind of interesting. And maybe on some level, it's like, that meant something because of the fact that it matter. I, I don't know. I thought it was just kind of significant in some shape or form. But maybe it's just kind of like, I don't know, maybe thinking too much about it. Moving on to it, but... Maybe I think ultimately in his own way, that's him trying to protect her. But I think it is because I was always wondering, it's like, why do you not? Why can't you correlate that to that? Maybe there's something there. He didn't listen to her, took Serena to the station. Even when Serena was like, hey, I need you to not take me. Mom said not to go to the station. Oh, your mom's a little crazy. So we're not going to listen to her. OK, dad goes there. Thing still happens. Granted, she did run this time because she saw the man with the tattoo, so it was proof that he kidnapped her. Nico tried showing up. Obviously, fate started getting in her way. He got the ring and the hair uh, follicles examined. But, uh, like, a lady came to get his car because he had unpaid parking tickets. I love the fact that he's like, bitch! And she's like, excuse me? So he's like, not you. I'm talking about fate. And he, the fact is that he had to clarify that and everything. It's just like, everything was working against him in this episode where he was driving away. There's a biker that got on away. And then, like, the fact is that tracker that was on Serena got lost. And it's just... It's crazy how everything fell apart in this particular... Because you had Laura trying to bust out of the hospital, seeing everything on phobic, seeing Tom get the call on TV. Because he was having a conversation, he was debating with this dude named Jack, who's all against, like, the death penalty and everything. And obviously you have... Um Tom, like, you know, fighting for the defense of the whole death penalty, which kind of begs the question, like, do you not know that Nico's brother, Danny, is innocent, that he is the first one in line to get executed and everything? Do you not realize that he is innocent? Because you had the scarf and everything. But then again, it might be the same thing as, like, you know, uh, Cupcake, you know, Nico's friend. Like, the fact is that he only, he was along with it because he's like, well, Danny did it. Nico believed it and everything. So maybe on some level, Tom's like, oh, yeah. They want me to cut corners with the evidence and stuff like that. Sure, but we're all we're, we're definitely putting away the guy who did it, who's the killer. Maybe in some shape or form, Tom is like an idiotic supporter. He's an accomplice in this whole situation. That he's thinking he's doing the right thing, but like I said, it's ultimately for some power play and everything like that. 
But the fact of the matter is he gets a call and they're like, oh, okay, this is what's happening. And he's like, he ends up blaming Lord. He's like, this is your fault because of you, because you took the rings and everything. Like if our daughter, she's like, no, tell me who's involved in all. He says, I'm not telling you anything until you give me the rings. He even says the most horrible thing you can say is like, if our, you know, you'll, we'll see our daughter again. You'll be the one that has to bury our little girl if her body shows up. And Laura slapped him. He's like, you're a piece of shit. Were these circumstances you're saying that? And you're trying to blame Laura? She warned you repeatedly you didn't listen and ultimately we as the audience also know and something laura knows too her involvement doesn't change the fact that serena would have died anyway which goes back to the question why did serena die now seeing who the kidnapper is once again now i got an even better look at his face it is the actor who played clay from benton but the fact of the matter is it doesn't seem like he wants to kill serena i'm starting to think serena kind of slipped away from his grasp because she is a fighter even he has to acknowledge she's like yeah, took cookie she's like yeah don't forget it i think she probably got away from him and like got into the water and drowned like her dying was never part of the equation but it seems like it is, in, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe he did kill her, but it doesn't seem like he wants to hurt her. It does seem like he is trying to take care, because no matter what the circumstances is, she's still a kid. No matter if he has to hurt people, kill people, it's obviously, it seems like he's not afraid of doing that, because he killed the Bray, no problem. But it does seem like he does has his, have his reservations about everything. I mean, he might even be the one that took out Jesse, too. Because, I mean, that's still labeled as an accident, but I'm thinking, like, maybe that's why he showed up at the funeral, too, is because he felt bad because, like, he had to take care of his friend. Because we end up finding out from Nico, like, when he got it, um, the DNA examined, it's actually from a soldier. He's a military guy, but he supposedly died five years ago. So, perfect, like, you know, person to use in this circumstance because he's a killer, I mean, because he's dead, because he's perceived dead, no one's going to be looking for him. And this kind of stems back to who I think this is all about. Because everything stems back to Danny. This whole situation goes back to Danny. Because all of this, Serena's kidnapping, possible death, is to push the governor to go through with the whole execution thing and there's that guy that was with him like obviously he was there when tom was there and he kind of kicked tom like hit tom when tom when the governor was mentioning like oh you could possibly fill this position on the um this new position as senator and he's like oh that guy and he's the one that's kind of for the whole execution thing and obviously everyone's got their own opinions about the whole situation but i think it's him i think this all goes back to him because he's connected to suzanne's murders in whatever way it might actually be this guy that actually killed Susanna too um, the one that's got Serena, like for whatever reason, like they're connected to those murders and everything. Maybe Susanna stumbled across the murder or something like that. And no, because it might stem from the fact that Susanna actually might have crossed paths with him. Like this guy's supposed to be dead. And obviously he's someone that Susanna knows. So probably had to wipe out Jesse and Susanna because they are proof of him still being alive. There are a few people that are alive that be able to acknowledge like, wait a minute, I thought you were dead. So that I'm I'm, and I'm sitting here talking about it, thinking about it. I think that might be why they they needed to die because they're the few people that knew who he was. So and this probably has to also stem back to their two brothers, too. I, I already forgot their names. But one brother was kind of accused of killing, and he's kind of had like a, the other had a psychotic breakdown. I'm thinking like this said person did that, and maybe because he's like, you're supposed to be dead, maybe that made him have a psychotic breakdown because it's like, oh, my friend who, you know, is like a ghost. He's a ghost, or, you know, maybe that kind of caused a breakdown or whatever. But I'm thinking that everything is stemming back from him. He's kind of like a clean up house for them or something like that and maybe that's what this whether it was for on his own or whether he was ordered to the whole serena jesse and these two people like cleaning up his past situation i don't know i think we'll kind of get more information on that going forward but that's immediately where my brain goes and the very least i forgot what the dude's position is but like even when the whole thing was going on when tom was debating on tv he kind of had this look in his eyes like he was on pins and needles waiting for things to con it's almost like he was waiting for something to happen so he's in a no i'm thinking it's him because obviously like the wife as well as the son they have their own position about this because the governor's in a hard position because it's like if he does nothing they win he does something they win too because it's like oh well, if he doesn't go through with the death penalty his position on the death penalty now it's kind of like okay then he looks weak but if he goes through with it it's like well now it's just like they still win because now they now they've forced his hand like that you know that almost like he can be pushed into any corner to do force him to act is kind of the whole point so i mean on top of all of this you had you know grace having a heart attack because the whole uh danny's death penalty has been pushed up to tomorrow it's not like a couple months into the future it's now so it's it's crazy dude that things played out like that and obviously finally like the biggest twist of the episode is where it leaves our heroes laura and nico 
tight team, but Nico tells her like, I need these rings to prove my brother's innocence. Yeah, the DNA and stuff like that, that's not going to be enough. I need the rings, but she needs the rings to save Serena, and now at least in divide it, because her bro his brother's about to be executed tomorrow, but Serena's going to die. It's like, Nico, this is, this is my baby. He's like, I know, like, he's befriended Serena, like, all this has been about helping Serena too, but this is also his brother, this is his grandma, I mean, his mother, you know, because if, you know, it puts him in a very hard position, dude, because he has to choose between Serena and his family. Because if he doesn't fix this whole situation and change things, Danny will be executed tomorrow, and ultimately his mom will die. And it's and him having to explain it to Ruby is like it's a broken heart. It's like having a heart attack is like you know um, being hit like with a broken heart. And she's like, if Grandma and my mom die, I mean if Grandma and Dad die, I'll have a broken heart. And it's just like Nico has to do everything, not just for his own sake, but for her sake, because if if this falls through, like, the two most important people to him or to her will be gone. I mean, to him, too, you know? And it's, it is not an easy decision. I did not see things going down like that. I was like, I thought Nico was going to tell Lauren and Landon, like, okay, we'll work to say Serena, and then we're going to fix this. We'll prove your brother's innocence. But I didn't even think about the ring situation. Like, that proves that, dude, that was so good. And now Nico's like, here's the file. And she's like, give me the rings. And he's like, I'm sorry, and leaves. And she's just like, it sucks, dude. Such a well oiled machine now kind of falling apart. They were on, they were so, cause their, their destinies are so intertwined. And now it puts in that position of like, if Serena is to survive, one must die. Now, ultimately, my brain is ultimately going to like, are we going to end with a situation where Nico sacrifices himself to be that life? It's like, uh, I, I think that's ultimately what's going to happen. Maybe when Nico dies, it makes sure that both Danny as well as Serena die. I mean, because the fact of the matter is like one life has to be sacrificed to save another. So it's like, oh, to save Serena's Danny has to die to have Danny live. Serena has to die. I don't I was I, would, I just wasn't paying attention to my words. So I don't remember what I just said there. Reiterating it. Serena lives, Danny dies, Danny lives, Serena dies. I, I don't remember if I got it right the first time. So there it is again. But, um, God, I'm such, I can be such an error sometimes. I, I, got, I talk so fast in these situations because it's always off the top of my head. So I tend to almost like blank out when I'm talking. But nevertheless, um, it, it begs the question of like, what is going to ultimately happen there? Like, if you set, if you're saving one's life, you're ultimately dooming the other. So in that circumstance, does it mean like only one life has to be sacrificed to save that other life or do two lives have to be sacrificed to make sure that both lives are saved, you know? I mean, does it count if you stop the bad guy? Once again, it doesn't seem like the bad guy wants the guy that has to read it. It doesn't seem like the plan is to kill her, but it seems like she's a byproduct, which now this all goes back. It's like, once again, like, what was the original plan? Like, Tom is connected to these people. It does seem like, oh, you do everything for us. You know, yeah, you're doing some little shady stuff. But ultimately, it's like, you do this stuff for us. We'll put you in a powerful position. It's like, did he get this position in the original time frame? Did things never, like, he probably didn't realize that everything kind of played out like this because of him. I don't know. Maybe that's the reason why he wasn't. He wanted to kind of vent, like him and Laura were having problems because for him he felt guilty because he knew Serena. What happened to Serena was because of him. And if he talked to Laura about it, she blamed him. And like Laura was the only thing, the only part he had left. But then there's the whole like aspect of like wanting to get rid of some of Serena's stuff when Laura didn't. You know, maybe it was a reminder of what he did or what happened because of him. Or maybe it's just because things did escalate to that thing. Like everything ultimately led to that anyway. It's just things had roundabout turns and twists with it. So it does beg the question like what what went down in the original time is what is so key in this situation to kind of understand how, like, what, where we're going with this whole situation. Like I said, it seems like we're piecing a lot of it together. Like, I am 100% sure it's got to be that guy. Whether he's the top of this whole situation, uh, like I said, it seems like he has some kind of political position, whoever he is, but I forgot exactly what it is that he does. Like, like the guy that, you know... Like I said, that was talking to Tom. About, it's like, oh, yeah, you're getting this position. Like, not the governor, but the other dude. So, either he's the top of this, or maybe there's even someone higher than him. But, once again, the question is, like, what is this all about? Like, why did all the... Like I said, it seems like it's all connected to, like, keeping this soldier's past hidden. But I feel like there's got to be more to it. Maybe it is just dumb luck that maybe Sir, um, Susanna or Jesse bumped into him or something at one point in time. Maybe the other brothers did as well. Or maybe it's just like, oh, one of them accidentally bumped into him and it started getting everyone thinking, like, oh, man, I saw this dude that looked just like... Yeah, I know, right? I thought he died. Like, I know, right? You know, so... That's where my mindset's at immediately, but I caught glimpses of next week's episode, but obviously I won't, 
I talk about, you know, I, I won't say anything about, but I'm so excited to see what goes down in next week's episode. This week's episode was fantastic. You were just like, I was just like, dude, how is this going to play? How is this going to play? Are they going to get to Serena and Tom? Sadly, they didn't just because, you know, fate being it. It's like, man, oh man, it's fate. Like, as Nico said, a bitch. Like, holy crap, the way... uh Fate is playing out in this. It's crazy. I'm actually not sure how many episodes are in this series. Um, I'm definitely we're winding down. Sure, there can only be like a handful. Of, I'm guessing at this point because I think this is episode seven or eight, whichever one. So I'm thinking at the very least there's going to be ten episodes. Might be a little more. I don't know, but I, my mind's immediately at ten. So I'm very interested. You know, obviously, like I said, things are winding down. So we're getting closer and closer to see how this all concludes. Like I said, it's like, it's so interesting to see them kind of divide it now when it's just like, especially because they were getting so close to, and obviously things between Laura and Tom aren't um, good, which I love that line. I didn't even talk about it when she was like, Tom was like, let me go with you. She's like, no, because I have to, it's going to take everything I got not to kill you myself. It's like, yeah, it's just like, stay out of her way. Let Laura handle this, you know? So a uh, little bit of kind of, I guess, arguably good call it housekeeping. Uh, next week, uh, a new episode of Midnight Texas is happening on Monday and another one is happening on Tuesday. So I kind of brought it up uh, yesterday when I was talking about Midnight te 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 uh, Texas. Sorry. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that whole situation, whether I'm going to put those two episodes together or whether uh, I'm going to put it together next week. That's episode on Tuesday with this, you know, uh, next week's episode is somewhere between, or whether I'll keep them two separate things. I'm kind of thinking I might just put them together. That's leaning where my brain is, but I mean, we'll see. Either way, just be on the lookout for that going uh, next week. It should only be from next week, whether or not, you know, if this is combined with that or, you know, we'll see. Like like I said, uh, when I was talking about Midnight Te Texas, really it doesn't affect you. You still get everything anyway, but ultimately it's just on my uh, and decide like how I want to like whether I want to bundle things or keep everything separate So most likely I'm going to bundle but like I said, we'll see but uh, aside from that That's all I really want to talk about in this episode. So the next time we meet be happy be safe Love life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye